Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, as a follow-up to um, my recent visit with Loretta to the Sparks Nevada factory of Chameleon Antenna, we have here the Chameleon Base HF Loop Antenna, or CHA Skyloop 2.0, Operator's Manual. The Skyloop is a reference to a type of antenna that is found in the Amateur Radio Handbook uh, for a loop, a horizontal loop antenna, and that's what this is. It's very simple. Let's look in the box. Um, we have things. Uh, Put together as strong as a truck. Um, there we go. This is the. This right here is the. Um, this is the uh, ballon for it. Let's see if we can look. No, there's a screw there. Okay. But it's just uh, got a ballon in there, probably a voltage ballon. It's got a space here to attach counterpoise or ground. And a place here to attach your coax. And then this is hung on something. And these two right here are where you connect the two ends of the loop antenna. Now, they also include the wire for the loop antenna. And there's a lot of it here. Now, what you'll find, the way this connects to this is it's got a carabiner. The carabiner uh, connects here. Let's see if I can get this thing to open. There we go. Like that. Okay, and then this comes down here and connects right there. And we tighten the thumb screw there. Okay, and it's connected on. And then this is 200 and let's see how long it is. It's quite long. The wire is 265 foot length. It says black insulated wire, but it's actually green, uh, which will kind of disappear in the middle of trees if you do this with trees. Now this is 265 feet and you need to bring it back around. There's the part to bring back around all the way to the other side here. So the thing will be like this with another one over here. Okay, and then this needs to be mounted or hung from some location and where it won't get all twisted up in the wind and stuff. Okay, now this 260 feet around, okay, that's 130 feet for half, half of 130 is 65 feet. So what we've got is the antenna wire is uh, 65 feet on a side. That's quite a bit. Uh, you'll want to get it up, if you can, 30 to 40 feet in the air. Now if you've got lots of great big trees that's possible, one of the things you have to watch out for is mounting this in such a way like with bungee cords protected from UV inside a length of plastic pipe or something like that uh, so that it can stretch as the trees bend in the wind. So you uh, don't want it, if you just firmly attach this to the trees, it will uh, break in the wind. But you do want to get it up fairly high for the low bands. Now one thing I will tell you about this, this piece of wire is a little too long for um, the 80 meter band. Uh, so it'll tune on 80, 40, 30, it, it'll, and, and 62, it'll tune on all those bands with a wide range tuner. I would recommend if, uh, connecting this to like LMR 400 or something as short a cable run as possible down to um, down to um, your tuner 
you'll need a wide range tuner like one of the MFJ tuners, the 10 to 1 tuner and so on. And if you go to different spots in the same band, you may have to retune. I used a loop just like this uh, at 20 feet for a number of years. It was my main antenna until I uh, got my uh, Butternut HF9V completely and thoroughly uh, redone. By the way, I want to point out something on these. See this uh, thing that is over this right here and holding it? You can pull this off like that, okay? And it's connected in there, so you can take this off while you're taking the wire off and then wrap it back around like this. Um, to there, to keep that wire in place and from unraveling. These things that look like washers are actually corner connectors. You would put a piece of rope through here, attach it to the tree or whatever that you're going to do um, you, you could even hook long bungee cords uh, in it if you wanted to. Now, one thing about these loop antennas, they have very strange patterns. Uh, first of all, on 80 and 40, they're basically cloud warmers. The uh, radiation goes up or up at an angle about like this. And in doing so, it acts as a near vertical incidence skywave uh, antenna. And uh, for a lot of tactical uses, that's what you want. Tactical or portable uses. Say, for example, you're helping out at a, uh, you know, a real long, like a, one of the 100 kilometer, 100 mile runs, and you've got a station in the wilderness, uh, 80 meters might be a very good choice. And this would work for that. Uh, at the higher bands, as the elevation starts to get closer to the right height, for the antenna, for example, the right height for a 20 meter antenna to have one big lobe close to the horizon is uh, 33 feet, so it's not so bad. But because this is a loop, it will not have a nice circular radiation pattern. It'll be, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is weird. A sort of a bisymmetric, if you took the loop and folded it up it would be symmetric that way. But if you then took that piece of paper and folded it again, it'd be symmetric that way too. So I'll call that bisymmetric. Um, and it does work. I mean, you will pick up a lot of stations on 10 and above. Uh, this thing can go up all the way to uh, six. Now this connection here, normally you would ignore, but you could experiment with putting a counterpoise off of this. This is connected to the outer shield there. Okay, counterpoise or just run something to ground. Okay, now when you do put your antennae here, I would recommend having some ferrite um, beads strung along the coax to kind of keep radiation from flowing down the outside of the coax. So I know this will work because I've made one just like it before. And uh, there you have a simple antenna that works. But this is a base antenna. It's not a real portable antenna. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind. This is not one to throw in your backpack because stringing it up, getting four corners 30 feet high is a little bit hard. And don't forget when estimating the length of your coax, you need to go as high. Um, you need the part that goes up that 30 foot run and then goes over to your radio. So you can add 30 feet of coax to whatever your run is. Um, so there you have it. Nice little antenna from uh, Chameleon Antenna, the Skyloop 2.0. The end is exactly the antenna that's uh, described in the manual as shown in this picture here and you can see the four corners and where it's uh, corner fed. So there you have it. This is the giveaway for the month of December, okay? Uh, actually, you can start sending your cards and letters uh, as soon as we are done with the 
November giveaway, but this will be for December. Uh, it'll be given away on the live stream on New Year's Eve. Okay. And uh, of course, you don't need to be listening on that day. And uh, what I'll do is I'll draw the number and, and just put it into the envelope from there. This is an antenna that is similar in concept. Um, well, no, it's not similar in concept at all. This antenna is done quite differently from the one we just gave away. This is the MFJ17754, which is an eight, I'm sorry, 40 and 20 meter antenna. It's trapped, trapped antenna, so it's two band antenna. It covers all of 20 meters and uh, about half of 40 meters, and you can pick the half of 40 meters that you want. Nice little antenna. Um, this thing is 42 feet long, and it covers 40 meters. So that's really nice for um, a situation where you don't have a lot of room uh, in your backyard. Okay, so this is it. Now, to do the... Uh, to do the giveaway, what you could do is you send a card or uh, a letter if you want. Let me get an example of a card here. Oh, I thought I had one. Yeah. Here's a, a card that um, came too late it's for its giveaway. So you'd put KE0OG Dave Kassler, uh, giveaway number five. P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And on the front of it, uh, put the return address where you want that thing sent. And also put your phone number. And the reason for the phone number is in case I have any questions. I do not need your email address or anything else. And when I am done with these, they all go in the trash. Okay. The entry must reach me by New Year's Day, the day before while the post office is, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve. I'm not sure if the post office is open New Year's Eve, but I will go down uh, on New Year's uh, Eve and pick up all the entries. Any entry received after that is late and won't be considered. Because the post office is being so slow, and because this is the holiday season, I highly recommend that you get your entry in the mail during the first half of December, so it won't arrive late. And uh, again, the giveaway is an MFJ17754, and uh, is a nice MFJ antenna. Uh, they cost less than $100. This is one of the antennas I got as a candidate for the reference antenna. Uh, I didn't, um, I didn't pay for this antenna. MFJ sent it to me for evaluation. Um, the reference station antenna is the MFJ 2010, uh, which does a better job. So that's why it's the reference antenna, and this is not. By when I say better job, this antenna works fine but it only covers part of 40 meters, half of 40 meters. Inside temperature is 75 degrees. Thank you for that important information. Um, so there you have it. Enter. Say, if you'd like to support this channel financially, I'd encourage you to do so. I use that money to uh, pay Callum, my assistant, and to go to places like uh, Pacificon, Porchfest is coming up, so is Dayton. And there are other uh, hamventions around, ham conventions. I think the term hamvention is copyrighted by Dayton. And uh, so that'll help me uh, bring you the story of what's happening there. Go to decastler.com slash support, and you'll find a way there that works for you to help support this channel, either one-time amounts or um, set up a, a monthly or yearly amount on Patreon or on um, PayPal. PayPal. Thank you. On PayPal. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.
So you are paying attention. Yes. 